There are 98 registered healing rooms in the UK where Christians volunteer to pray for people to recover from physical or mental illness. Our last big question this morning, does prayer work? Spiro Swerev, you have one of these prayer rooms, you've been praying a long time, you've said a lot of prayers. Does prayer work? Does, does well, God listen? Actually, I've, I haven't got a prayer room. I, I'm a leader of a, a prayer group. I apologise, you're uh, a leader of a prayer group. Do does prayer work? Um, by that, I think you mean, does God answer prayer? Yeah, does he? Because uh, does prayer work sounds it very mechanical, you know? But if he answers the prayer, that's a successful prayer, isn't it? Yeah, but if we were to ask every person uh, in this room to come to you one by one and to give you a request, would you say yes to everyone? I'd feel inclined to do that this, uh, this morning, yes, <laughs> I, I would, because I'm standing right in the so middle of it. Yeah. We, we, we have to consider the fact that God has free will, and God is, in, in his infinite mm. wisdom, is able to look at things before you ask your prayer and after your prayer is granted what, or not. So he always his, looks for the best. What are his, so those are his criteria for whether he's Some of his criteria. Prayer. There's other criteria. Mm. You know, the Bible talks about the, the importance of faith, you know. Mm. Uh, we, we also know that endurance and perseverance in prayer is important. Jesus many times turned around to people and said, it is your faith that has healed you. Um, we know that Jesus also gave teachings on prayer when he said, uh, if, no matter uh, whatever you ask of in prayer, believe that you have received it and you surely shall. So have, this, have you seen extraordinary examples of healing through prayer when God has answered prayer? Well, prayers? I have. But Can you, you give know, us an example? Well, some of the extraordinary uh, results of prayer don't always uh, appear as physical healings. You know, because there are deeper healings that a person needs, you know, interior healings, emotional healing, uh, mm. spiritual healing. You know, you could have people who are finding, who you, you, you can find people who are finding life tough or are going know, through a particular challenge. Does God know what's going to happen in the future? Of course he does. So, so why do you need to pray then? So why, so do, why do you need to pray? Sorry, sorry, well, why think, do you need to pray? I think if, if he knows what's well, going well, to happen, interesting, Julie. if he knows what's going to happen, why do you need to pray? What, what no, difference will God prayer make? God can see all the multiple possible choices you can make, Good and he'll him. know. He'll know which. He'll know if you're going to take a left at the next junction, he'll know where that will lead you, and if you take a right at the next junction, he'll know where that will lead but you. If he knows like what's going to happen, he, he knows. He knows everything. Yeah, you, we have free choice to take a left so or a right. So if he knows somebody's going to recover from cancer when they have three months to live, or something. No, he knows that someone has the choice at least to pray right. that they recover for cancer. If they don't pray for cancer, then there may be someone else who could be praying for them. That also works with God because there's examples in the Bible where mm. someone may not have the faith or the strength to carry really themselves draws? to God, but what they could have is people who are praying for well, them. Well, that well, also will well, help. When when, for example, um, when the Jewish people were in Auschwitz and they said all those prayers in their last moments, why weren't those prayers answered? Very good question. Why weren't they answered? God always has a purpose in everything, you know? But whenever our prayers aren't answered, the, the scriptural verse of all things work for good for those who love God always comes to mind. They loved we, God. They were deeply religious of, people. Well, of course they did. But so look at Je Jesus. When Jesus, Adam Wishart, Adam Wishart. when Jesus came... The millions that die, like in the Holocaust, and the millions that are dying in Africa currently, the reason that they're dying is because they don't love God? Did I say that? I never said that. I said what I said. If you, if you need to know a little bit more about the mysteries of our sufferings, you have to go to the cross. Because there, that's where God reveals his love for mankind. The cross is the place where Jesus came to take away our sins. He suffered for us, and he took in our place the judgment we deserve. Larry Turner, it seems a bit random to some people. Yeah. Oh. Big support yeah. from some people there for, for what I you're saying, that, sir. I think that... For, if you, I think the act of praying can be quite therapeutic in itself. The yeah. act of mm. praying is a contemplative act, and if it gives comfort to people who have perhaps somebody who's very ill in their family, then you know that's a good thing. But personally, if I'm in hospital and somebody says we're going to pray for you, I think I'm a goner. I mean, you tend to pray. <laughs> I'm going to pray for you means there's nothing else that man can do, and I personally would prefer and that I, not to happen. And I sympathise with that. I also think that prayer can be, if we aren't careful, a statement. To defeat. I like the idea that if, if I was diagnosed with, a, with an illness, I wouldn't be praying. I'd be researching on the internet. I'd be taking the, drink, drinking this juice, doing that exercise. You know, I like the prayer can be, I think, for people who are perhaps, um, perhaps supine to destiny. And I like to think you've, maybe it's hopeful that actually self-determination is what gets you through. I well, I don't understand. If I can just say, if I can just say yes. about that, yeah. when I first come to realise 
that prayer actually is answered, it could be frightening. You know, when, mm. when, when certain things were happening in my life and I could see that there was something above coincidence. What was happening? Well, various little signs and things in my life that, that I could see that confirming signs of God working in what, my life. What were the signs? Can you give us an example? Well, for example, the, the, uh, following my, my, my cousin's death when he was 35, you mm. know, I asked the question myself, well, what does all this mean? What, where did death come from? Mm. Uh, how come we've got a loving God and how can he allow death? Mm. Well, the answers to that, after I found, we're all in the Bible. Oh, death didn't yeah. come from God. Uh, death was never part of God's creation. Death you know came all the through the envy of the you know, devil. We know all the prayers and, and, for world peace that we have. Came, we always pray for world peace. Finish it's this not point. working, no. is it? Christ came to bring us life and to undo the works of evil. Sparrow, so, there's a real, there is, let's be honest, there's a real problem here, okay? I believe in a loving God like you do. I, I do actually believe that there is a way to that loving God through the person of Jesus. Uh, but we have to say that w we both know people who have prayed for healing and it hasn't happened. We know people who have prayed for healing and it has happened. It seems to be random. It seems to be crazy. Sometimes it even seems to be malicious. <laughs> and, you know, the, the, they say that, the, 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 for me, the best prayer in the, in the Bible is the prayer of Job. You know, the only honest man in the book of Job is Job, who says, mm. what on earth is happening to me and how dare you, God? And it's actually the opposite of what Larry says. It's not passive. It's actually a way of saying, actually, come on, I'm going to call you to, to account here, God, because something terrible is happening to me. And uh, personally, I've seen people who had much more faith than I, than I have ever had, who prayed hard every day uh, once they were diagnosed not to die at the age of 40 from stomach cancer. I'm th thinking of a particular friend, Ali. She prayed and prayed, and she died. And when she died, she died beautifully, if you, if you know what I mean. She mm. showed us a way to die that was full of hope, and she, she felt that she knew where she was going. But her prayer was not answered in the way that Spyro was talking about. And as, well, and God a, as any kind answer. of believer, hang on, as any uh, kind of believer, say, wait a minute, wait a minute. be honest and say sometimes it doesn't work. Well, let's talk to... Uh, well, it doesn't work according to your Jim. understanding and expectation, no, no, but Jim. God always brings something good out of prayer. No, that's, that's my experience. No, that's absolutely not true. But, you know, um, I just wonder this. We, we all pray for world peace. and Every night my, ch my children pray for all the sick children in the world, but there's no visible improvement in the sick well, children think, in the world's condition. I think condition. even the people today uh, that, have expressed with the problems and the challenges that we're facing as a nation. If this nation prayed more, I think we would have less problems. One well, recent well, example... Well, uh, one recent no, example Important, very important. If this nation prayed more, we'd have fewer problems because you are living proof of that, Jim. A policeman, Good morning. clearly. Uh, they're saying this in Devon and Cornwall. They're saying it here. You've got this prayer group in the police. There's a, a quite a large amount of office. A lot of police men and women are praying at the moment for their jobs, but that's another <laughs> issue. But there's, uh, you say if communities pray for the police and if you pray, you can really reduce crime. Yes, we believe that there is a real living God who answers the prayers of his people in Jesus' name. And, uh, and that is making an impact in our communities, uh, certainly on the crime uh, rates as well. Um, I would agree with my colleague here, uh, Spiro, that um, God does answer prayer. It's not the prayer itself. That might sound like a, a self-help technique that, that changes the way we perceive things, like coincidences being answers to prayer. Uh, well, quite rightly, uh, Inspector Roger Bartlett of Devon and Cornwall has attempted since 2007 to link some statistics to answers to prayer. Uh, I won't bore you with all the statistics, you can find those out on the internet yourself, but uh, there have been amazing answers to prayer, crime, uh, crime reduction. The town of Barnstable, for example, there was one year when uh, the local community and the church prayed for uh, a reduction in crime, and the town of Barnstable saw no incidence of disorder at all on Halloween night which as a police officer is utterly, <laughs> utterly incredible. Not one. Now there's, um, now there's well, the, the other things like reduction of road, um, road uh, in instances of uh, uh, severe casualties and deaths on the roads from the high 90s to the low 30s in the space of a year. Uh, and, and obviously I know people are going to say, well, these are coincidences. And I, and I would want to say mm -hmm. very clearly that that is in no way any alternative uh, and that doesn't decry from good leadership in the police, good, police good laws, mm -hmm. good resources, Good police officers, good police staff, uh, and good, good communications with the public to tackle all these things. This is just another factor to put into this whole argument and this whole presentation and say, well, look, here's people saying that, that praying to God actually has a result it as works. well. It, well Richard D. North, I heard you mumbling behind well, me. Well, it does seem completely bonkers. I mean, be, uh, simply <laughs> <because> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> 
granted that we know that the huge, overwhelming majority of prayer is, is not ostensibly answered, on what possible basis would one ever know that somebody was being credible when he thought that this bit had mm. been? Well, obviously, well, the crime they, starts. They, they, they yeah. the, the, well, the crime but he's already said, said I mean, I hope he doesn't put his truncheon away for good. I mean, we, <laughs> oh. we, I mean, we <laughs> already know. Let, let I mean, he said lovely things about, well, we, we've actually got rather good leadership and we've done quite good moves and we've done this, we've done that, and Barnstable isn't maybe that troubled a place anyway, etc. Yeah. I, I mean, it, the, the role of prayer by, by his own... Admission yeah. like is marginal. Nicky, well, I don't go on. Well, yes, well, listen. I mean, the thing about evidence is if you cherry pick yes. statistics, so if you choose Halloween night, lo and behold, I, you have I, a success. I, 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 what about the day before or the day yeah. after or the whole year? I, or I actually completely agree. Statistics are not the be all and end all. In fact, I think as Einstein has said, not everything that can be counted counts, and not everything that counts can be counted. But, and, but what there about are, those there communities so that aren't doing enough? praying and are cle clearly still blighted by crime. Is God not being a bit selfish that he's only answering <laughs> prayers? Should he not be helping everybody? No, no, no. The, the Bible clearly teaches in the book of Romans, actually, chapter 13, that God is very involved in the pursuit of justice in our communities and, uh, I, I, and I certainly assists and appoints the authorities to, to do these things. But could, could I point out that obviously coincidences... You answered the eight question when you said what? God shouldn't God answer every prayer. You yeah. just answered the eight question, which was our previous question, wasn't it? Well, the eight is maintained. Should we give everybody their needs as a nation rather than discussing whether we should or shouldn't? See, okay, so that also is like a request, isn't it? Okay, yeah, yeah. And you say you had your hand up. Hi. Because we're talking about statistics, I might be able to help a little bit. I'm a postgraduate researcher mm. at the Center for Applied Ethics at Cardiff, mm. and I've just completed a project with one of the leading experts in the UK mm. looking at papers that were paid for by the National Institute of Health in the United States, big research projects to investigate whether prayer works or not. And we looked carefully at all these mm. studies, and one thing became very clear. When people know that they're being prayed for, then they have a tendency to believe that it works. But if you blind them to the knowledge of whether they're being prayed for or not, prayer has no effect whatsoever. Ah. That, that doesn't fit so, in line uh, with the research I've seen. Because well, that, that, I think let, have, let, let's speak we to have an argument about who's credible with the research. But the that's reality a fascinating is argument to put to a medical professional. Well, there's uh, no uh, evidence. Uh, that uh, that medical professional. Is this the famous happen. placebo effect? Well, I think, I think there are two effects that, because uh, I spend a lot of my time trying to work out cause and effect, obviously, with yeah. treatments. And, and undoubtedly, there is a powerful placebo effect. Um, have uh, you ever seen a cure that you just have no explanation for that is no. otherwise inexplicable that you think, oh, no. well, my I, I can give you a very... I'm just asking you, Daphne just yeah. now to see if she's... I mean, she's firstly, no. But the other thing is, is that biological variation, so, for example, with, with somebody who has terminal cancer, biological variation always means that there, there is an outlier who beats the odds. There will always be people yeah. who beat the odds. And if you believe in God, uh, which I, I don't, that you might attribute it to prayer. If you believe in homeopathy, you might attribute the, the beating the odds to homeopathy. And if you actually, uh, the area that I'm interested in is obviously a lot of cancer drugs. Mm. It's very, sometimes people apply that benefit to a cancer drug and the drug companies will probably <coughs> like that too. So uh, I, I cannot believe that there is a, you know, there is a cause and effect. Nicky, I mean, I mean, you a story. If, Spiro is going to give us a story. Spiro is desperate to give us a story. If we look at what's happened in Libya, if we look no. at what, what's happened in large parts of the Middle East, yeah. the people who rose up against mm. their despotic rulers, had they simply prayed, if they would still have the same pray. ruler. They have taken action. And my right. concern is that some people pray rather than taking action because, because it's about what will happen in the next life rather than actually making things better in the current. It's just about asking... Mr. Pony, is this about asking for th something, or is this about... Well, I think what, what Lowry was saying earlier on, ordering your thoughts and having a little bit of focus and just sort of centering yourself and saying, right, I would like this to happen and I must do this and mm. it would be good if I did this. Well, no doubt that's true. And I, I think listening to the Christian view of, of prayer, I, I'd want to separate out two things. One is belief um, and the other is th what's happening in, in your mind. And I, I actually am open, at least, to the possibility that one person's yes. mind can influence and affect another person in, quite, in ways we don't really understand. When I've met people who've uh, been very deeply...
practicing on a spiritual path, not necessarily Buddhist, you sometimes encounter a sense of their, their being and a, and a sense of their loving kindness that really touches you and it has a healing kind of feel. So I, I'm open to the idea that we can uh, influence each other, but I, I really want to separate that out from uh, the faith that goes along with it, the idea that it's God intervening, that there's some kind of, uh, that Jesus is involved in some way. The mind is more mysterious than, uh, than we know, and we can access uh, some of those powers, I think, through meditation, maybe through prayer. Your, your question, Nicky, was, does prayer work? Uh, I feel obliged you, to say... Have you had any prayers answered? Yeah, well, uh, that's a very good question, isn't it? Because I, I prayed very hard to have a child mm. while, while my partner and I were going through IVF, and we had a child. Now, I wanted to know afterwards whether or not that child was a result of a miracle of faith or a miracle of science. I came to the position that I, I didn't really know. And you know what surely I actually... It was a fact of science, surely, wasn't it? Well, it was a fact of science, too. But there was also that other feeling. What about all the other people who were praying just as hard in all the clinics whose desperation I saw on a daily basis? What about them? Why weren't their prayers answered? That's can a question... I, can I just say something? A, no, hang on. That's a question that I, I wrestle with, because I want to point out um, actually, the Spiro's version of, of the way prayer works is only one Christian way, version of the way it works. It's not the only Christian version. And another thing to say about whether prayer works is, if I'm contemplating the way things are, and I'm externalising how I feel about them, even if there's no God there, that's a positive that's thing. That's a good thing, right. And well, if, and let if me it just brings say... me back to say, well, what's in my back pocket? What can I do about it? What action can I take? I can't pray for more time on this, on this Nikki, schedule. On can I, can I just say just a couple that's of a, points? You've Number only one, got 20 seconds. Right. Prayer, first of all, is about relationship, and it's relationship with God. And God is a living being, he has free will, and he, he is always the manon knowledge. Now, with the second issue about the brain and thoughts, <laughs> I met a man called Stanley I'm Vin so sorry, I'm so sorry. Listen, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, all the debates will continue on the message board. See you next week. <laughs>